My name is Brenda Bates, Medicine Woman, and this uh, is Medicine Woman Revealed, and with me is the other part of the Medicine Women, Jen Tuffo, Medicine Woman. <laughs> Happy Monday. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> you know, it's always Johnny on the spot, and it's that, um, that... Uh, what do you call it? Improv. Yes. I never was good with improv, <laughs> but I'm learning day after day or week after week. I'm getting there. I'm learning it somehow. Okay, so this is an awesome Monday. <laughs> and we have our radio show tonight on Sepia, but we pre recorded it. So we're going to be talking about all kinds of interesting things. Sounds like we're, I repeat myself so much, but I've been practicing the speech for so many times that I've literally <laughs> been bored of my own self. <laughs> right, so we, so we uh, have at a local Raw Foods group a presentation tonight that we're doing, so we pre-recorded tonight's show for Sepia, and mm -hmm. we were practicing some more of what we're going to be talking about, but yeah, and I feel that way too, <laughs> especially with my sermons. Oh, that would make sense. Yeah, that you got to do it year, week after week. It feels year. like it's the same message, and some people are just like, "Oh my gosh, I just I I heard something that was just so amazing today." So it's just, you know, it's that repetition, and wherever they are, then they hear what they need to hear, and just trusting that that's what that person needs to hear in that moment. That is true. That is true. Because I always acclimate myself in my classroom. So I'll walk into the classroom, and all the people that are there, and I don't speak for a few minutes, you know, I may say hi, but I, what I'm doing is my soul is acclimating with the higher selves of all of them, and what is the main thing that wants to be talked about. So, as far as uh, what I talk about, it ends up being, what do you call it, specially designed for those that need it. And when you're doing the radio show, it's like I'm, I never have a script, I always go seat of my pants because that is how they like to uh, have the flow and so there's times that I'm like oh my gosh and so with sepia we have we don't really get callers because they're so still new so we end up talking a lot and I'm so glad you're Think there of to this because too. it's a radio show <laughs> <laughs> yes so we um, what we call it it's kind of like playing tennis where you lob the ball back and forth to each other and talk about different subjects and that kind of thing. So yeah, so we're still new and we know we'll get those callers and people in the chat room, but it's kind of nice at this point to be able to do those pre-recordings and know that, yes. it's, that it's working out the way that it's supposed to. Because what I, the philosophy I bring in is about becoming a spiritual human and it all based on the fact is that I had looked around and I see people saying, oh, do this, do that, and have, did I see any results? I mean, I had a gentleman write me and he's like, well, I don't see people any are happier or any more successful than anyone else. And so I don't understand why does everybody want to keep promoting this stuff. Well, that ended up being my question uh, about maybe 2002, 2003, somewhere in there. And then I started finding all the answers. And what, what I found out, actually what I need to stop doing is say, what is raw foods? Raw foods. Um... It is all the way that you would prepare fresh vegetables and grains and fruits and combine the spices in, in, to, in a way that they taste incredible. I had someone make me a hamburger, but it, would, it tasted like hamburger, but there was no meat. The way they used the spices, the way they used the raw food and mashed it together was great. I used to, uh, my ex-husband was vegetarian when we first met, um, then it's a long story, went on Pinyon DX and that requires meat and that kind of thing, but anyway, um, but I learned how to make some of those burgers and that kind of thing, and um, oh, I just lost the type of grains that I would make with the food um, to make different kinds of burgers, but it's, keep, it's, all, it's like keeping the integrity of the food, keeping it in its purest mm -hmm. form, the to, be, to keep mm -hmm. the um, the nutrients so that it can absorb into the body in a purer way. Exactly. It's <clears throat> but it, but it is really good, and I was very fascinated by how they can make and, and it almost tastes like stuff that we would buy. Um, it takes a lot of preparation and prepare, prepare time, and that's the problem I have is that I do the bigger picture and to bring it down to detail, not have a bunch of detail. I, I love being an artist, and so I'll draw and or paint, 
but here's the thing. Good God, give me a day and I'll, I mean, I did a mural on my wall within 14 hours because I could not stand to sit there and just look at detail. Um, and <clears throat> the more detailed it is, the more beautiful it is. But I cannot do detail. That's just part of my makeup of who I am. Now, I can do incredible detail when it comes to healing. I can do incredible detail when it comes to listening to the soul. But when it comes to the, the little details of cooking, painting, it's like, oh, really? It just feels like it's so monotonous. And it feels like you're on assembly line constantly focusing on that one point. And for me, I like to collapse time in the way that it's random and it's different and it's whole and then it's detailed and it's bigger and it's smaller. So I had to have a job that requires that there's many different things to do instead of just one particular thing. You know, that's why with the radio show, I'm surprised that I'm still doing it as long as I am, but it is. It's variety. People call in. It's totally a variety. And, it, and I like it because... This is what I do for a living. My, my, my soul sings when I get to help people. All right, getting back to the, that question about um, getting the results. That's it. Um, from the different, the, the new thoughts, the unity. The positive the, thinking, laws the, of attraction. attraction. All that stuff, that information that's coming on the planet. And the person say, well, people just look just as miserable. Where's yeah. the results? Yeah, they want proof. And what I realized is that that was my question. And... I said, well, if I'm going to go out there, then I don't want to look like an idiot. I need some answers. Well, I do. i got tons of answers, a lot of healing tools. And the best way to put it is you are born with this uh, part of your brain called the caudate nucleus. In that part of the brain, it governs fear. So you're born with fear. It's biological and neurological, and you're born with it. Your soul's journey of anything to do with fear is in that part of the brain. Plus, with the parents you choose, you pick up their genetic line of how they communicate with fear, and then the encodings, whether you came in as a woman or a male, so you got gender, you got race, you've got culture, you got... Um, the group consciousness and how they deal with fear. And so, some people, um, I believe that we choose the parents, the family, that kind of thing, as we're a soul mm -hmm. um, making those decisions. And that <clears throat> there's so many intricate details, and that seems like that would be part of it. That if you've got that journey still left to unfold as a soul, that it makes sense that you would pick those with the coding or the DNA that's <laughs> going to help you. Uh, work out your stuff. Yes, and, and the other part, uh, if it's not fear in that caudate nucleus, it's joy. Joy is a state of being. And the fear is not really uh, fabricated, it's not made up, it is actual experiences that in the past, any time that your soul has been suppressed, has been compromised, has been prostituted out, has been controlled, condemned, when you could no longer make known the unknown, when you no longer could be that individual, but you had to be a sheeple. And what happens is that you then learn to, what they call, stop putting your hand in the fire. And you know, you've learned, oh, keep putting my hand in the fire, I'm going to get burned. So when you would start being an individual, you would get your hand slapped. And eventually you says, okay, I'm not going to be an individual. And... Then there is, that for a moment there, I thought we got disconnected because I felt like nobody was listening. But I realized there's my phone, we didn't go through Skype, everything's fine. And I just feel like a, a bloop. Something just whizzed on by. And, but again, it is that part of ourselves that is just there that our soul wants us to address and to heal. And what, so what's my job? Is to help you see what's in that caudette, what's in that part of yourself. Because here's the interesting part. Your frontal lobe creates your reality. The frontal lobe and the gray matter is all about where ideas come in. And if the ideas stick, then they become trees with branches. And it is a way that we hold memory and we integrate. But if we do not look and focus on it, you know, we have 41 thoughts per minute, and if we don't focus on it, what happens is that then it starts to be pruned back, stuff falls away, and the glial cells, the G-L-I-A, 
L cells come in and they're like vacuum cleaners and they sweep up what you don't use and so then that's what they call forgetting. So that frontal lobe, as I said, the more you focus on it, the more you will create uh, trees and magic trees as we call them because they are formed to, to hold the memory. Now, as ideas come in, if the caudette is too strong and has a lot of fear, then it'll, the one comes in and it'll be, oh my gosh, you know what, that's too different, I can't do that, get, get it gone. If it's too high a frequency, get it gone. Why? Because the caudette is your comfort zone. And the comfort zone we explained before was... Oh my gosh, the comfort zone. Sorry, put it's, right on the spot. <laughs> Wake well, up! Well, because I've just been contemplating this a lot because of people in my world and my, you know, network of people seeing them in their comfort zone. Like, hey, wait a minute. I got, you know, I work really hard to be able to get this, you know, to, to get to be comfortable. You know, I lived, I lived in this kind of way, and now I, I'm with the friends that I like. I like this. I'm, I'm content. I'm and not, I'm not. Yeah, and I've, got, it's, and I've got a routine. I've got a routine. And why are you saying to me that my routine is bad? <laughs> that's what, and so that's what that's it what feels it sounds like. That's, what it's, that's how I see people perceive or, uh, what we're saying to say, well, let's get outside your comfort zone. Right, and, and what would your soul wants to do is constantly grow. So before we get into any club or the any comfort further, zone, write down comfort zone. Oh, that's we're going to get know. back to it because we have a question now. We have a caller first. Okay, if caller first. Then there is a question. And from yes, the chat. you can oh. ask. Oh well, the caller's gone. Well, we'll just go right to the chat room. Okay, so this is a direct question. Um, I'm hoping I'm able to say, touchness. May I ask a medical question for myself? So. Um, yes, go ahead, and okay. um, we know that there's a lag. Be careful now. When they ask in the private, they don't usually like their name to say. Okay. Well, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, uh, we'll see if they ask away. Let's the cover zone is... Okay, What? What now what's going on? Oh, I was just looking to see. Okay. The I will get to the question when it comes up. When the caudat nucleus... It surrounds that mid part of the brain. It surrounds and, and um, <clears throat> it's the, the claudette, well, that's what we call it, claudette, but it's caudette nucleus, surrounds the midbrain, and it's the barrier. You have any ideas, any new things, any uh, stuff has to come through the comfort zone first and before it can get to the midbrain. The midbrain is where you process all of these new ideas and knowledge, epiphanies, and all about that because it's minus the personality. That's what you have to give up in order to, so the subconscious mind can take the information in and write it down. It is also um, space where the, uh, let's see how I want to put it, the, the lower cerebellum, where the ancient memories are. And as that the ancient memories are, it is. Who, who, you remember who you were, but until you can actually get there, how much fear do you have to process out, create closure to, to create the end to it so that you can file it away and clean it up. When the fear begins to be cleaned up, what replaces that, what in that caudet is joy. And joy is a state of being. And if there's some people that are just born fearless, what do they do? They have so much joy, they walk around and go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the next thing you know, what you were fearful, fearful of doing, they went and just did it, no skin off their backs. They've done it, and it's over with, and they moved on. That's because they don't have, their, their caught at nucleus is not vibrating at such at a high rate of fear. It has more joy in it. And the more fear that you have, the more you're going to uh, miss opportunities because... The opportunities are presented to us in the neurocortex, which is the gray matter in our brain, and it comes through, but then when it meets the caudet, the caudet says either yes or no. If the caudet says there's too much fear, it's no, and if it has joy, it says yes. Now, the old days simply was um, how to train yourself to get past 
that Claude, that Claudette. Now, before I go any further, we do have the question. And we will take the question. Okay, so this person has a rash, and they don't know how it came about. They wanted to know if it was environmental, food, or sex. Okay. Um, so they just, that's the medical question. For All right, so person. Um, we'll go and get our big book in a minute, but what I'm going to do is understand that it's personalized. We individualize the book while you're talking okay. in. The individualized part of ourselves is that we have our own story and what our soul wants to project. I think it might be in there. Now, I also need, no, I got a pencil. All right, so I'm going to turn to your soul and say what's going on because a rash usually represents that an organ hasn't has doesn't know how to process, and because it doesn't know how to process, then the last outlet is the the skin ha is doing its best to process it out. Now she this he she whoever it is asks the simple question whether or not is it chemical reaction? Um, it's, a, it's a she. Okay. So what else was it? The environmental. Environmental, food, okay. or sex. So what I'm going to, food, sex. Now here's the interesting part. We can find a physical answer. That's what your doctor's for. That's what um, you want to become assured what it is so that you can solve it. From well, the angle that we come in at, it is going to be a result of some form of action, thinking, behavior, something that has gotten to the point where you don't, you know, you can't process things. Now, before I go into this answer, I want you to read this, Jen. Okay, so from our book, Messages from the Body, by Michael J. Lincoln, Ph.D., rashes represent roughed up. They feel that they are being rubbed the wrong way. There is a sense of being attacked, a fear of harm, and an abiding insecurity. They are the product of a wrong-making, yet sexploitive family by their mother. Okay, before you go any further, so let's explain this. Um, like, for instance, you are doing your best to fit in the relationship. Everything may be good, but you may be carrying, oh my God, I'm wrong. You know, it is from the childhood, oh my God, I'm wrong. Because... I have watched people that have great relationships and yet a rash will appear because there is that RTJP, which is the right temporal junction frontal lobe, that simply is stating, oh my God, I think they think that I'm wrong and they think that, you know, I don't want them to be wrong because I don't want them to take the love away. When you have the fear of abandonment or you're going to, the love is going to be taken away, what will happen is that you will then... Uh, most generally, your small intestine, uh, where it's supposed to process and break down um, important stuff as you eat, um, it may not be able to metabolize or break it up. So, and if this person can play with us and communicate with us directly, yes. that would be great. That's what I was asking. Yeah. And so, in a sense of being attacked, you the tone. Now, I was talking to my husband the other day, and I must have used a certain tone, and there was a part of him that felt like he was being attacked. And I said, okay, we're out of sync. Why, uh, who am I being to you? Uh, who, who do I sound familiar with? And so then, you know, of course, that jars his memory. He goes, oh, so he realized it was a certain reaction and behavior, something that had happened when he was little. Nothing bad. But it was enough that the love's going to be taken away. I'm not, go I'm not the good boy or however, you know. Um, so it's the sense of being attacked, the fear of harm. And so you're used to consequences. For me, I was always used to consequences. So people will do something loud sound and I'll jump because my body is getting ready to go into this, just be in the fight, flight, freeze, which is the sympathetic nervous system, okay? And when it is just the sympathetic nervous system, that means the parasympathetic can't do the rest and so that they take turns of actually helping the body function. Let's go a little further. Um, this is the part of Rami. Okay, so go ahead and read the next one. <clears throat> Off with their heads. There's a chronic irritation over delays of gratification along with a notable lack of patience. They have a pronounced tendency to infantile attention getting and infantile Tyrannosaurus tactics. They're simply unable to be cooperative or go with the flow of life. 
they were not allowed to differentiate and individuate as a child, and they are still symbiotically attached to the tie that grinds with their mother, mother substitutes, and mother standards. The mother is about that nourishing aspect, and again, let's break it down. There's different degrees of how we, we feel. And if you are used to being um, controlled, yelled at, that can become a form of an irritation. When I hear crying babies, my body literally starts to go into a state of nuts. It doesn't have the filter to process that off. And if you're used to um, it, your parents instilling in you the, the fear so that you'll be respectful and behave, and what am I else am I missing? Um, not miss anything. So when, when they instill that in you, you lose that love, but then you also lose that ability of imagination to make known the unknown and to create that individuality. You shut it off. And what else here? They just got out of a relationship with constant fighting. So oh. oh! I uh, put forth the idea that now that, that, they're, that this person's out of the relationship, the body's relaxing, and now it wants to process out all those experiences. Exactly. And, she's, and because of that piece of information, that's very important because your chemical peptides, you, for every thought you think, you create chemical peptides. For every interaction in the environment, you create chemical peptides. And what happens is when you have a chemical peptide overload of whatever it is, your body has to find a way to get rid of it. Uh, I, I won't say I broke out in hives, that, that's a different story. Breaking out in a rash, again, the, so one of your organs says, I can't process what's going on, and so it's too much of an overload, and so another organ has to come in and help. Now I'm going to go in a little further. And she says, correct with my mother and father. Okay, so what happens is that she's now chronologically aged, and the, the oh, okay, hold on, i got to find out exactly. About seven months old, she was seven months old, I'm seeing her being in the arm, so she's, I think her mom's holding her from what I can see, but there was the fighting, to the point that it scared her to the bone, from what I can feel, and, and it was a, uh, um, so this distrust that comes up, it, is it hers? No, it is the family environment, how they distrust each other. And she, part of her is like, no, I want to trust. Being in a situation with, that she wasn't just in a relationship, when you're out of sync, so is trust. That, that'll disappear. From what I can feel, the rash basically is coming from the idea that you're your sympathetic nervous system is kind of stuck in the paralyzed will. I can't move forward from this point. You know, it's, I can't, one more irritation and I'm just going to break out. I just, I can't do this. And um, one thing that I've been healing is my heart meridian. And that is, is that I, Jen has watched me, see, seen me do this, and I now I'm at the stage. So I will listen to people just talk, and it'll be a certain note that they will say. You know, like for instance, humanistically, I've watched my husband, well, don't be doing that, and saying that to my daughter. My daughter goes, well, I have to do that. And just the little conversations that there is, what's well, my computer. Well, da 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 it won't work because of this. I start to lose it. There's an edge, and because she's brought this to my attention, and I watched an experience yesterday, there's an agitation in the environment on just coming from the tone of a person's voice and it agitate it upsets it's um it's like when you have a, a glass of water and it and it starts shaking or something's agitating yes that, and you can actually see it you i could because i was tuned in i could hear it and i could feel it and i could almost see it in the air and as soon as the musical note, and I say musical notes because there's 12 notes in the body, and that's what my body is picking up on. And when they changed their tune, when they changed their, their attitude and they were done with that particular, they weren't yelling. It was just, just the intensity of the notes. Then all of a sudden they said, oh, see, it changed. And then she looked at me and she goes, okay, yeah, because she could feel then the difference in the communication. Mm -hmm. They weren't fighting. It was just that way of talking of what they dislike. For me, it's about the dislike. And, and any time I'm around people that are going to go into that stage, I have to actually, uh, because it's so strong, I have to bow out. I have to walk away so I can heal it because I have no filters left to take care of that. I broke out in hives and I, I that's it. I walked away because I cannot have any more of that stuff. I can't do it anymore. So it's like our, our body is constantly wanting a form of homeostasis, meaning 
all the time. Uh, uh, um, all the time, our, our body, in order to cope, to manage, to live, to participate, and to create that, sometimes our body's going to break out in something. Because I've had some different skin um, issues and that kind of thing. Because it's, it's not it, it, it's anymore. not internal anymore. It's coming out. But I'm still participating. People still see me and hear me, and 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 I'm able to participate. But my body just it's got it's got a reaction well, to the have, environment. Right. You have to move forward chronologically aging and chronologically <clears throat> living. You have to be putting yourself in those environments. You're an adult, you consciously are think, not thinking about it, but your whole time your subconscious mind is going, oh my gosh, here we come again, this is what's happening again, this is the environment, and you literally will just start up again. Now, what I want you to understand is that she said, wow, so correct, there's no trust in the family. Because you know it that way, put it on a scale from 0 to 10. Then, I want you to um, give it a color, and you can use Meridian Tapping. Um, because what you're going to do is you, you want to stop knowing it that way. You want to preserve all the positive learnings, and you want that to stop. You're still This is a healthy way of protecting yourself, because by... By getting that program and stopping that program, uh, you will allow yourself to stop drawing people that are going to cause you to feel like you can't trust. Um, what do I mean by that, Jen? There, you just, it's like your radar is going off like, uh-oh, I, I, I can't be, it's like you're a, you're, you've got this antenna. Oh, it's the caudat um, nucleus that's actually saying, sending out brain waves to the people that says I'm the, the attraction is, is that I have to send up my fear and now with the law of attraction you have to bring back that fear it's like a magnet it's a magnet and so then you have to experience it because your subconscious mind is saying please resolve this the time that you were on center and you're happy and then what throw you off is because of distrust now your center is the distrust has took took your center so now you're over here, displaced in your own self, and then all of a sudden you have to recover. You're looking for false self-assuredness. You're looking for a way to recenter yourself because that's just what humans do. And because you have to create a new center, you then said, I can't process this! And so then you go on forward with life, and then all of a sudden the issue comes back up again because your subconscious mind is saying, remember how you couldn't process that when it first happened? Could you do it now? And you will have, if you haven't grown or haven't gotten insight, you're going to say, here we go again. You know, yep, see, another butthead just did it to me. Uh, yep, see, you can't trust people. And you're, you're gathering proof when it comes to proving to yourself that this doesn't work or this is what always happens. And your subconscious mind is saying, okay, great, yeah, I'm glad I got proof, but can we resolve this so we can stop playing this? So it is bringing to consciousness the part of the knowledge that you may not be aware of. You know, so heal it. Tap it down to zero. And if there was a uh, Pope therapy code, I would then tell you to hold R1S because R1S represents the large intestine. It's the dogma. It's the same shit, different day. It is how you want to cry, but you have to make it neat. And they won't let me do it. And you're just like, ah, and it's just, you're stuck repeating the same day. It's like Groundhog Day, just, just repeating. And so literally, if you hold R1S and just start focusing how you know you can't trust, because at one point you knew you could trust, that's how you can compare that you know you can't trust, because you've had you, you, both yeah, sides. Yeah, you know it's gone. But you have to have, yeah, you have to have known that it was there in order to know that it's gone. Yes. And so it's that testing and then tapping it out and or holding it down to until it's gone. And if it pops back up, hold that spot again and get it completely out of your system so that you don't have to do it again. What's really important again, I, I have not how I don't know how to explain this. When you bring it down to self-talk quiets which means you, the 41 thoughts are down to where you only hear two out of that minute or three out of that minute. You don't hear all 41. It's and quiet. It's, not, it's quiet. And then the emotions of, ah, are down to, oh, I feel more peaceful, content, maybe indifference. But when a fresh experience pops up, what do I mean, Jen? So you were just working on this idea of trust, and all of a sudden somebody in you have an interaction with somebody, or you see it on TV, or you hear a song that has the idea of distrust, oh, that's, that's a fresh experience. 
<clears throat> that your soul is wanting you to say, okay, remember we were working on that? Here's what it looks like brand new. Yes. And so that fresh experience, is something just happened. It doesn't mean the healing didn't work. It means the healing is working. Now go back and hold R1S and just take that fresh experience, put it on a scale from 0 to 10, give it a color, and hold those points and hold your forehead and your hairline and watch it go down. For those that don't have a point, one of the biggest things you can do for yourself is just placing your hand over your forehead and your hairline while you're thinking of your health, while it's still fresh, while it's while still there. While you're in a stress situation, I would do that with my with my ex. would be riding in the car, and I'd just be like leaning with my hand on my forehead. He's like, "What's going on?" I'm like, "Nothing." Yeah, just nothing. <laughs> nothing. I'm just taking care of okay, myself. Okay, when we we're gonna take a small little break, when we come back, we'll take area code two five six. When we come back, right, and then we've got two callers in queue. Two five six will be next. So it's good to have you back. Um, real quick before we go on to the caller. You have something that's dear to your heart. Yes. Um, so tomorrow is September 11th, and I lost one of my lifelong friends. We met when we were five years old, and Alicia uh, Titus was a flight attendant on United Flight 175, which was the second plane that went into the towers. And what her parents have done is created an Alicia Titus Memorial Peace Fund, and that uh, the money that goes to that furthers peace studies at the university level. There's a college that was founded by my uh, tradition, the Swedenborgian Church of North America, uh, and that's in Urbana, Ohio, and the fund is uh, dedicated there because that's the area where she grew up, and so what they want to do is they are very, they work with Peaceful Tomorrows and um, have really united together after losing their daughter to um, promote her vision of world peace. And where did, did they go all over, all over the world? Yeah, they've gone to um, the, the war in Iraq. They went uh, to comfort parents who are losing their children over there. Uh, and um, so, yeah, so they, they understand that it's not just uh, losing the life that happened on our soil, but in the war, people are losing their children. And so they're um, working to promote peace rather than um, fighting for a solution. And I, I really enjoy that. So if you would like to donate any money... I'll put that information in the chat room. And uh, we'll, we'll put it on the video because we are recording today. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but it is an actual fund, and if you want to know any more, then just uh, go ahead and write um, mwr at myself.com, and then she will send you some more information. Okay, so uh, uh, as we go into the next caller, it's funny, it says um, they at promo... <laughs> you know, it makes people laugh, you know, and 3C and, uh, says, yeah, I laugh every time, too. And then uh, Kimberly says, it sounds like Brenda. Yes, say yes. It is me. It is me. Just say yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, so, so let's, let's take that. So let's caller, we promise. Okay, area code 256, you're on the air. Hello. Hi. Hello. Um, I was listening to her talk about the uh, patient thing with the lady on the, the flight. Yes. Correct, correct. 
Well, before you go in, and the thing is, is that for your soul to put you in that position, we need to find out what are the gems that you have to receive from the job you have so that you can move on to the uh, job that you really want. Um, your soul doesn't just put you in these positions just because it wants to treat you like hell. And there, there's some gems in there. So I want to look at and see what it is that they want you to know. Um, you are very... Um, you, you, for, okay, so you're an empath to some, to some degree, which means you can feel what they're feeling before they even answer. So it makes your job even harder because you already create a pathway of feeling that you understand before they do, which triggers a lot of stuff in you. So this job doesn't fit in you. So um, how to fine-tune yourself so you don't have to lose yourself um, because um, you, you are this kinesthetic person. Now I've got to find out what other gem is there that this person needs to know. Um, I guess I'll have to draw a card because there's some something specific. All right, so give me a second. Did, you, did okay? Did your did you see um, your parents kind of go crazy from having to work? Did one of your parents have a job that you just saw that it drove them nuts? <laughs> yeah, I know that one. <laughs> and it is a full time job. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Okay, so yes, you have a pathway that um, says that uh, the job's not supposed to be easy. And that's a good question. Let me ask your spirit. So is it a program that jobs is not, working is not supposed to be easy? Job is supposed to be hard? Nope, she don't have that. Again, there's something here i got to look for. Um, they I can't don't, put I, my I, finger on it. Did, did you know you were an empath? Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't know that. I've had more, I've had dreams. Oh. Oh. I necessary for you to have this job and one okay tell me to that and I really uh, feel that that definitely is it um, a great stepping stone and I'm asking is there anything else you need to learn from this job before you move forward and it said yes and what it came up with as Jen's flinging cards all over is you are always protected and divinely directed you have a remarkable internal warning system that lets you know when things are out of alignment. So what they're telling you is to pay attention and fine-tune your empath abilities so that you don't, um, well, not lose control of them, but when I was, okay, I'm an empath, but before I really started to fine-tune, I would just be overwhelmed, overloaded, to the point where I couldn't really function in certain areas. So I had to fine tune, get a handle on it, and then I had to heal out some of the fears that I had with it. 
And now I can go into casinos or into large places like airports where, and malls. Or the Comic Con. Comic -Con the oh Comic yeah, I was Comic able book. to do that. That Comic was amazing too. So they want you to pay attention, yes, you're an empath, to notice some of the triggers that would actually cause you. And you said it was because you asked questions, or you know that these questions are invasive, and you wouldn't even want to be asked these questions. Yes. Um, and it says, you, so the rest of this card says, you're about to enter dangerous territory. So tread carefully and be aware of your surroundings. So it is, what, what they're referring to now is that, there's a part of you that know that you have labeled that if by asking questions that is dangerous. And now I have to ask your soul, why do you believe that? And it was at three years old you were asking questions and people took offense and that pain that they, uh, by taking offense and, be, and have to offend themselves, it really literally hurts you. Okay? You, you with me so far? Okay, so your three-year-old self labeled that when you go and start to communicate on a very personal level, you have to be afraid of the answers. So, I, I mean, to me, that'd be something that, because even if you were to work at another job, I can still see you going, oh my gosh, i got to tell people this, or I've got to communicate this. And I, 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 and that's because it reminds you of the movie of the Sixth Sense, where the boy didn't understand his abilities, and then when he was um, thrown in that little dark room, and he literally could pick up every sound, his body would create uh, what you call a, um, oh, what do they call it, a psychosomatic illness, because. Literally, he had no filter to stop himself from being attacked. And they weren't really attacking him, but in his mind, you can create things to happen when they don't need to. You have a choice between having it being um, a fearful attack or, a, or, or, or pop the illusion so it can disappear. And they're saying that your three-year-old self literally had knows there's a consequences for asking questions. It's not even personal questions, it's just that you're asking questions. And they're saying you need to heal the enemy, which literally means what, Jen? What am I really trying to say? Because I, I know what I want to say, but I'm, I can't spit out what I... Heal the energy of the three-year-old to stop asking questions. Yes, that's what I want you to do. The three-year-old knows the consequences and is scared crapless about it. So it has to feel its surroundings before it actually enters that space. And the problem with that is that you're leading with the fear. And so the universe is going to give you that fear, even if there's only supposed to be pleasant stuff coming your way. You're going to interpret it with that fear. They want you to build up a filter. And once you've done that, now this is not your normal kind of filter. It's not to be ignore it, not to um, just kind of let it go. It's not that. It's to tap out, or if you use hope therapy, is to let it go. Because R2D, now I don't know if you've been listening before with us, but I use healing tools to help people heal, and hope therapy is one of them. And in order to do hope therapy, you've got to have a code, and so it's R2D meaning R is in right wrist, second position, and you push your thumb deep. If you go to mwreveal.com under healing tools, hope therapy, you will watch the video and you know see where you hold the points because there's more to just holding R2D. You gotta hold your forehead and your hairline and then you gotta think about how you are going to, so your topic is you're gonna focus on how by asking those people's questions, feel that anxiety, feel that part. Then from the end, go ahead. No, we're not telling you that you're going to have to keep it. It's just that if you don't learn this particular lesson, you will make it happen in the another job. It will follow you no matter where you go. It's the it's that little. We haven't got to the anxiety yet. We just got to the how you know they're going to have anxiety is what the first thing you're going to look at. And then you're going to look at how you know you have anxiety because it's all about that relationship. 
And once you heal this, then the power of choice is yours. Yeah. We're not saying that you have to keep it or that you have to let it go. But once you heal the feelings that are associated with this job, you then have the power of choice. And, and then the clarity is there in the situation. So yeah, then you'll be able to literally be able to move forward into a job that you like. But otherwise, if you leave now, huh? That's why I began to look for another job Friday and got down to the position of open Tuesday. And I think I'm going to have to get this job. Correct. And I say yes. And I, I, I definitely say yes, get away from this job. The job that... I'm afraid because people will be, there are people out there. Yes. will get really, will trigger people post-traumatic stress disorder. Yes. Correct. You're fearful for your life. Yes. And that's why I want you to heal that fear that you have fearful for your life, but you can't really do that until you look at how the enemy could attack. It's how you know the enemy is going to attack that you have to look at first. Then you can address how you know what it feels like to be attacked because you could feel that as a kid, literally to be attacked. Whether it's by words, by um, physical abuse, you know what it's like because your three-year-old is all about knowing how it is that you know what attack feels like. Now, at three years old, do you remember anything that happened then? No. Okay, you don't have to know. It's something as simple like that can cause the three-year-old to come up with a different answer. As the adult, you, you know it's different. But as the three-year-old, it, it can be totally seen a different way. So because of that memory, I would then notice how you, you reckon, so you would hold R2D and how you recognize helping your father and watching that pipe hit you, watching, the, just pay attention. Because you could have been asking a question when that pipe was coming at you, and so you're, you are associating that you're going to get hurt. This is all has to do with the memory that's triggered. So, to answer your question, do I get another job? Yes. Will you get the other job? I have a feeling yes, but I want you to walk away with the gems of healing from this particular job you're in so you don't have to carry it over into the next one. Okay, because I don't want... Yes, um... Exactly. Exactly. Yes. That's yes. The R two D is um, R is the right wrist, and it's not the letter T. It's the number two. So it's R two D. Okay. D is a dog. D is a dog. Correct. That means pushing the thumb deep. <coughs> so you look at all the perspectives. Yeah, you have to, that's why we test. That's why we test. And when you get a fresh experience, like, let's say you're remembering, okay, yeah, I was being attacked. Um, you put that on a scale of 0 to 10, you think, ah, it's a 5, because it's not fresh. Unless you really are frightful, then you can get it up there. And if you can't get the number up there, then the universe actually supplies you with a new fresh experience, but not as harsh as, as you had it the first time. Don't waste it. Go back into that healing position and goes, okay, this is what I know what it feels like being attacked. And hold that position and because when you take the fresh experience and you say put it on the scale from 0 to 10, you will this time probably say 10 or 10,000 because it, it's that much in your face. Okay? Oh, okay. Um, so, 
So the reason I probably took this job and did not look into it, I knew mean, it was about a study, but I didn't know it was that invasive or offensive or could be offensive to people. It's because I knew I had more work four years and I was out to take a job somewhere that could be four. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think I took that job is to get my feedback with the job area. And then because I did not know right but your soul needed you to have you have this position so that you would take a chance to heal that's correct that is absolutely correct so you're on the right path oh thanks well, sometimes just talking it out with people, it gets helpful. Amen. At least you, you, you're you getting it. <laughs> yeah, you're getting it. So go heal. <laughs> oh, believe me, I understand the stress. Well, then use the golden lasso. That's on the website, too. Put the golden lasso up and say, it, 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 the healing tool, the golden lasso, you use the golden lasso and you bring into you the like-minded job so that you can do something that you love to do without having to do something you hate. And so, again, look for the golden lasso, okay? Oh, thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank Stay you blessed. for calling. Uh, bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Alright, so who's the next? We have area code 334 on the air with Hello. Brenda and Jen. Hello. Hello. How can I help you? Um, I'd like to know what, if you could tell me what my soul has to tell me. Okay, so we will look for a general reading, and the first thing that comes up um, is that. I see you as a, um, a beautiful person and can follow their heart only to an extent. So have you ever had somebody constantly putting their dreams into your head and you have to fulfill it for them? No, not really, no. Okay, because what I'm getting is that you're not able to dream the dream you want. You are such a kind person that you help everyone from what I'm looking at which means you're helping them with their um, dreams or helping them to feel stable, helping them to feel uh, like they can move forward. Does that sound familiar? Well, maybe a little bit, yeah. Okay, and what they're doing is saying, good job. You have learned to find that goodness about yourself that you actually can help people and inspire them to move forward. You, ha you need to dive into that more <coughs> because there's a part of you that it can be of great service. But it also can be a burden. Be it also can become a burden. Because those people that could do for themselves don't want to. So they go to you and then you kind of do it for them. It's like teaching them to fish. You need to teach them how to fish so that they will be able to eat for a lifetime. Does this make sense? Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, so you're doing great by helping people, but then you also have to put a cutoff point so that they can, so you're not enabling them for you, you, know, for you to have to show up the way they want you to all the time. Does this make sense? Uh-huh. Okay. So that's what they're saying, because in order for you to take that next part of your step, and I don't know if it's a career or if it's just having better relationships, but to know when to cut them off. Because there are some people that live in that wound or live in that particular thing, and it's great to be wanted, 